Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus, is indeed a Lord of all, and He's above it all. And in Him, we live, we move, we have our being. I greet you amidst all that's taking place in this paradigm that we call the world and life. And I greet you amidst God's plan and purpose being unfolded at such a time as this. Now, in the middle of all of this, in the middle of the challenges, in the middle of the tribulations, in the middle of the, of the difficulties, in the middle of all hell breaking loose every time you try to step outside your door because the world goes nuts at the fact that there are those that walk with the light and the truth and God is also bringing in light and truth which is exposing the worlders on every side well you keep doing what you do <clears throat> God is in control of all of this and as he's continuing to have his way and as he's continuing to make things known that were previously hidden in the darkness as the light is coming forward as darkness is being exposed and what is being hid in the darkness is being brought out for everybody to see now well they're falling apart see the worlders they, they rely on the darkness in order to be able to do what they do what what was what did Jesus say was the verdict everybody quotes uh, John three sixteen. you know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life okay but they don't talk about the next parts of those verse. You know, for God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. And then it says, but this is the verdict, that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Okay, so people love the darkness because their deeds are evil, they, they, that's their workers of iniquity. They don't just do evil things. That's their work. That's what they create. Now, since they're workers of iniquity, and since that's what they're actually creating in their time, in their efforts, in their, in their waking hours, in their sleeping hours, that's what they're creating. <clears throat> well, what happens when the darkness is not there anymore because the light has come in and it's exposing everything. What happens when the darkness has nowhere else to go? Because the light is everywhere. Well, so that's kind of the situation we've been moving more and more into, is that we've been moving more and more into a situation and a time where there's just more light and <clears throat> the darkness has less hiding places. Today, something you did 20 years ago could not only come out, but could be blasted everywhere and the entire world could know and see about and see in a matter of minutes. You don't know where the next shot will come from in that world. Likewise, too, you know, lies and deceptions and all those types of things that they lived on can be debunked. You can create something and they can create something and send it around, you know, trying to slander somebody. But at the same time, too, if it's not true, it can be seen for being not true very quickly as well. So <clears throat> the consequence is that as it's getting uncomfortable, very, very, very uncomfortable for the worlders to do what they do because their, their system's breaking down. They don't have what they had once before. They don't have the protections that they had once before. <clears throat> they don't have the safeguards that they had once before. They don't have the ability to shape the narrative like they did before. Because other things can come out, and what are they going to do? I mean, we've, we've mentioned on here the Podesta males just as an object lesson. I mean, it's also a horrible, horrible crime that needs to be adjudicated. Um, <clears throat> and if nothing else, an inquiry 
into that which has not been done openly and overtly which makes you wonder why people won't touch it um, I, I saw a post the other day of the number of those 2060 first emails that were released from Podesta how many references to pizza and hot dogs and uh, ice cream and walnut and all these all, now that's all part of the FBI declassified um, pedophile language, code language that they use to communicate with each other. This is this is this was declassified um, a few years earlier. And then all of a sudden, there it is all over the DNC emails that were hacked by John Podesta. Now, when they say hacked, too. Um, <clears throat> If you go in and if you ever, if you ever see any, I, I have gone through some stuff on WikiLeaks before just to take a look and to read, and it's interesting because there's so much in there. Um, I mean, you've got tens of thousands of mails from any person you can think of that's that they've that they've uh, decided to target. But you know, Podesta was routinely told by his IT department that he needed to secure his account with two-factor authentication never did um, there's there's discussion that he might have his password might have actually just been the word password which there's a lot of people that do that but it's not very secure <laughs> so so anyways um, but you know very casual way that this guy dealt with cybersecurity because why because also too in the old paradigm they didn't have anything to worry about in the old paradigm, the people that would know about stuff like this would would not be around. Would be Seth Riched. Would be Sean Lucas. Oh, those are names people haven't talked about for a little while. We remember. Seth Rich um, <clears throat> was a DNC staffer. That uh, you know, twenty-seven-year-old guy from Omaha. Um, strong evidence that he might have been somebody that was giving information uh, about crimes taking place in the DNC and uh, was killed in a, in a robbery where they didn't take anything right in front of his place. Sean Lucas, 38-year-old lawyer, um, served papers on Debbie Wasserman Schultz for what happened at the DNC convention and the um, the complete you know taking away of the will of the, the people within the party to ramrod in Hillary Clinton and to take the nomination which should have gone at that stage to, to Bernie Sanders through all of these shenanigans that they had um, yeah he ends up dead in his bathtub Suicide, so they say. Amazing how many people would want to kill themselves that are associated with those people. You know. Anyways, um, that's that's listen. That's par for the course, guys. <clears throat> that's um, that's normal, standard operating procedures in their old system in their old time. The difference now is that it's all out there. Everything's out there for everybody to see, everybody to know, everybody to have to deal with. And um, that which they could keep hidden from before just kind of seems to stay and linger. You know, the blood cries out from the ground that things need to be settled, things need to be dealt with. And they haven't been. You know, the cup is full, it's overflowing, there's nowhere else for this stuff to go. And at the same time, light is coming in. And as light comes in, the darkness is, is really, really struggling because how do they keep it going when there's light everywhere and everything's exposed? How do they keep the game going? How do they keep the witchcraft going? Oh my gosh, there's so much witchcraft just out there in front of all of us to see at any given time at this point. I mean, they're, they, are, they are just going full on in all of the rituals. All of the... the um, <clears throat> All of the signs. In fact, they, it's. It used to be they tried to keep some of that stuff hidden. 
But, you know, as time has gone on, it's just becoming the mainstreamed. Mainstream. They're just mainstreaming the witchcraft. Trying to recruit as well. But listen, there's no... In that world... Listen, the child of God, you have infinitely more power flowing through you in Jesus Christ than the most powerful occultic witch this world has ever seen or created. And why is that? Because all authority on heaven and on earth was given unto Christ Jesus, and he said, therefore go. And he said, there's, there's, that in his name we cast out demons. In his name we heal the sick. In his name we do what we do. And we do that in his name because the name of Jesus has power over those things. They may cast a spell. We pray in Jesus' name and that whole thing is undone, reversed, and the presence and power of God can flow into that. They may try to do something, but the, but the name of Jesus provides protection for his people. They may try to put up a front to hold souls, and in Jesus' name we go in and we plunder the enemy. So the name of Jesus is above all, it's all-powerful, and it's over it all. And, <clears throat> you know, with what, with what we deal with and what we face on a regular basis is um, opposition in the spiritual realm, because we battle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. So we battle against these spiritual um, spiritual forces and their human agents, but you also have to know you've got the victory. But you still got to go into the fight. You've got the victory, but you still got to go into the fight. And you and in the fight, you're going to have in the fight, you're going to have exhaustion. In the fight, you're going to have. You're going to have, you're going to be tired. In the fight, you're going to have all kinds of things that are going to come up that are, um, that are not easy. You know, and in, in that process, when you have to deal with all of that, <clears throat> it, you know, you've got to, sometimes a lot's going to go out. You might just need to just rest for a bit. Sometimes you've got to, you've, you've got to pray. You've got to pray. You've got to bring this before God because He can also strengthen you when and where you, you, you hit that wall. Because, you know, sometimes, listen, sometimes it just gets to the point where you're just like, ugh. Because we're, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So we're not of them. So we're constantly, constantly, you're gonna, you're just gonna, it's just gonna be that. You're just gonna always have to come through because we have to be overcomers now there you can be you can be smart about what you do um you don't um you want to you want to structure your life and your world as much as you can to minimize the damage the enemy can do and so there's a difference between being siphoned off of and poured out the enemy wants to siphon off your spirit, your power, your energy, to use it to try to build the world and the world system. God wants to pour you out according to His plan and purpose and His direction. Two very, very different things. Two very, very different approaches. And if, if the enemy has a way to structure your life and your situation, what that will do is put you in a context and in a situation where you can be drained. But what God will do, if you listen to the voice of the Spirit, is He will show you how to set things up where you can be poured out according to His Spirit and His leading and His direction. And you're, when you're poured out, there, what you do has purpose. When you're poured out, what you do has reason. When you're poured out, there's a fulfillment in your energies and your labors because those are going into something that God wants. Do you understand the difference? Now, in both situations, the, you can and you will get tired. In both situations, but <clears throat> when the enemy drains the people of God, it's, you know, there's, it is, it is predatory. Whereas when God pours you out, it's under his direction and his fulfillment. You, you know, just like Jesus, that when you're done with that, it is finished. <clears throat> you've, you've, You've completed 
the charge that you were given by God. And we need to complete the charges that God's given us. There, listen, guys, there, there's, as difficult as the time may be for each and every one of us, there is work that the Spirit of God has given us to do. There are things that God wants us to do while we're here. God, from the very beginning, had, had um, used a man, used a woman, to accomplish His purposes on the earth. That's His way. I mean, he set up the creation, and then he made Adam. And he gave Adam a charge. <clears throat> you know, he covenanted with man from the very beginning to accomplish his purposes on the earth. Now, you and I, we are here because also God wants to use us to accomplish his purposes on the earth. So, in order for us to be able to do that, we got to be in step with him. Now, the beautiful thing right now is that light and truth is flowing in. And as light and truth is flowing in, um, we can ride that wave to accomplish things today that we could never do years ago. You know one thing that's interesting? Go back and, and read uh, Daniel and Joseph. You know, those stories <clears throat> in the scriptures. One thing that's very, very interesting is the context in which these guys are drawn to the forefront and are given prominence. It's not during times when everything is going well and things are, are, are then, and the world is, is, is everything's right with the world. No, it's during times of upheaval. It's during times of calamity. It's during times of deep questioning. It's during times... It, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's during the time when the world doesn't have an answer and their very survival is at risk. Because as much as they might hate you, they also don't want to die. Because they fear death. Now the child of God, you know, to live as Christ to die is gain. We're okay with death. But they absolutely are terrified of it. And they're absolutely terrified of, of all that they've put themselves into while they're here being wiped out. So, <clears throat> that being the case, knowing that, the, the, that then you also can understand why when they don't have an answer, they'll come to you. And really, they don't have an answer. They don't have an answer for what's coming up at all. So the children of God are the ones with the answers. Because we have solutions where they don't have. We've got ideas. And where do those come from? Those come from God. So the famine is going to come into the land. Uh, Pharaoh's got, had the dream asked. Mind you, he asked everybody else before Joseph gets the chance to speak to him. You know, that's, that's an important part, that's an important point in the sequence. They tried everything else before the children of God were <clears throat> ever called up. You know, you have to understand that, that that's also part of it as well. They're not going to talk to you, call you, tap you for being part of any kind of solution if they don't have an option any other way. So, just recognize that. <laughs> but, you know, Pharaoh needed an answer. He needed a way forward. And um, that came through Joseph. Daniel, okay, mini, mini, tekel, parson, right? Remember what was written on the wall with the hand? Um, after those guys were were having their full-on feast with the um, with the, the the items that were plundered from the temple and they were toasting to some other gods and and dishonoring the Lord most high okay well they asked for Daniel when nobody else had an answer for them you know they asked for Daniel and 
Because why? Because he had an answer. And he didn't want their gifts. He didn't want anything that they had that they could offer him. He wanted nothing that they had to offer him. But he's willing to interpret what that said and what that meant. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Tonight, your kingdom is going to be taken from you. It's going to be given to somebody else. Yeah, so recognize that, that it's all right. It's all right for things to get, to, for, for upheaval to come. It's all right for, um, for things, to, because, because without that, without that, the world will continue on in this horrible, horrible slave system, which needs to be upended, needs to be stopped. So all of that needs to be stopped, and in order for that to be um, destroyed and to be taken down, there's got to be upheaval that comes in. There has to be light that comes in. There has to be truth that comes in. There has to be a different way that comes in. There has to be exposure that comes in. There has to be opportunity that comes for the children of God to come in. You recognize that in the upheaval that comes while worlders fall apart because so much of what they do is just moving furniture around the deck of the Titanic. It doesn't really matter. They just give them something to do because they've given up their soul to the world. So they create a little spot for them where they give them their goodies and their rations. But they're irrelevant. Once you... Once you join the world and the world system, you're on that side, as far as the bigger picture goes, you're irrelevant. <clears throat> because you're, you're, you're part of the hive. You're part of the collective. So you, you're just an extension of that as long as there's any, any remaining life force in you. And that whatever life force is in you is used to build and uh, further perpetuate that system until there's nothing left in you, and then in which case you're recycled into it because you gave your consent to it. And you end up in a hellish thing. Now, for the child of God, you're not part of that. And also because you're not part of that hive mind, you can have independent thoughts. Thoughts that flow from the Creator. You can actually have ideas and solutions that come that they don't have. So, it's in the upheaval that there's going to be many opportunities that's going to be created for the children of God. <clears throat> and this is why, too, you need to pray. This is why, too, you need to stay close to the Spirit. Because in the opportunities that are going to arise, God is going to show Himself strong through you. And having that comfort and that familiarity in your birthright as a child of God to be able to pray and to be able to ask your Father and to know how He is going to respond and how He's going to show up as you trust Him. That's something you want to do. Because in doing that, when you go into the battle, that's what you're going to know and that's what you're going to be familiar with. You remember when David was going to go up against Goliath? Well, the thing there was, um, you know, Saul tried to put him in his own armor. And what did David say? He was like, I, I can't wear this. I'm not used to this. And he didn't need it. He didn't need it. He just needed his staff and his slingshot and those five rocks that he picked up. That's enough. That's enough to do the job. And he knew what he had and he knew how to use what he had, what God had put in his hand. Listen, you don't need all of the trimmings of the world. That's probably another good piece to, to remember even off that story. To get the job done, he didn't need matching armor. Okay? He didn't need armor like Goliath's in order to go up against Goliath. No, what he needed was some skill, some trust in God, a little bit of patience, good timing, you know, and to do it, to show up. Well, go for it. You know, go for it. Listen, all that you've 
done and trusted and followed God with going into all of these days, God is with you in it. And everything that you've trusted Him with and all the ways that you've, you've, um, you've looked to Him, well, He's going to show Himself strong on our behalf. You've not lost in any of it. Not lost in any of it. So, <clears throat> recognize that. Recognize that He that began that good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. Recognize that that light <clears throat> is coming in on a major scale and the darkness has nowhere to go because the light is chasing it out. Um, and recognize that we have a work to do. We have a work to do. And we're doing it. We're doing it. You're doing it. Trust. Lord, in Jesus' name, bless the brothers and sisters we pray right now. Strengthen all of us in your name, Lord God. Watch over us in your name. Father, in Jesus' name, be with us. Lead us and guide us in your plan and purpose. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. Say hi. Always love to hear from you guys. Keep on keeping on. God is good and you're doing great. All right? All right, love you guys. Talk to you again sometime soon. Bye.